Kip, what's up, man? Great to see you today. Glad to have you back on the podcast. And I'll be seeing you again a little, a little, it's a tongue twister, a literally. little later. Uh, oh, okay. I wasn't saying literally, it's, although it sounds like that, a little <laughs> later uh, this week for our main event coming up this weekend. Yeah, it's going to be a great time, man. Just the solid, the caliber of individuals that we get at these events just gives me hope and uplifts me just being around those kind of high caliber men, you know, and maybe a lot of people know, but we have this main event, roughly what, how many men, Ryan? A little over a hundred guys coming out. A hundred guys, most of them actually being Iron Council members, Yep. which and not to judge you guys that aren't part of the Iron Council, but it's always safe to say that when we have a chance to get to together with other Iron Council members, the conversation uh, is elevated. The quality of, of men that will be around is just stellar. And so I, I'm just looking forward to it. Yeah, man. Should be good. Well, guys, good if times. you're just joining us for the first time, we're going to be going through some questions from... Uh, our Facebook group today, which is at facebook.com slash groups slash order of man. And uh, love to have you join over there. And that's where these questions are coming from today. So let's see what we can do on these yeah. ones. Yeah. Do you want me to really quick though? So we, we, we'll, we might mention the iron council a little bit, just as a heads up, just in case I forget to mention it later, the, um, are we still open? It's, it is a, it's unofficially still open. Uh, I, me I meant okay. to close it down and got a little distracted. We had another event here this last weekend. So it, if you might be able to slip in there real quick, I, I'll, I'll just leave it there. You might be able to slip in under the radar real quick. Orderman.com slash Iron Council if you Correct. want to slip in. If Otherwise, you're so waiting until later this year or right before next year. Towards the end of the year. Of the year. That's right. Okay. All right, Alan Diaz, is there some plans to expand the podcast content range to other countries? I think it would be a great resource for other men out there. I'll be more than happy to help in translation to Spanish. Thanks for all you do, Ryan. And Order of Men has been a life changer uh, discovery, a life changer discovery. Yeah, well, I, I don't know about that Got necessarily. Fun. I mean, as far as the podcast, you could listen anywhere. I mean, it's not in different languages, so I'm not really sure how that would work. If like, I really, I have, I have no idea how that would work because it would be somebody else's voice. It'd be a different language. I'm just not sure of the logistics of that. Quite honestly, I do have a lot of people reach out and they want the podcast or books in different languages. Uh, and I'm certainly open to that, but just really haven't gone down that, that rabbit hole yet. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And it's not that it isn't important. It's just I'm focusing on what I can do where I can have maximum results, maximum reach to help as many people as possible. And that's in America, clearly, Canada, Australia, uh, the UK, you know, English speaking countries. Not that I'm opposed to having this information everywhere. It just obviously there's no translation needed to do that. So logistically, it's a whole lot easier. Yeah. And when you look at your podcast numbers, like, you know, when, Remember you shared with me a couple of years ago, like, there's like three people in Madagascar, you know what I mean? Kind of right, stuff. So, right. <laughs> so yeah. we probably have a pulse of like where the attention needs to be given. Well, and, and that might be just self-fulfilling numbers too, right? Because yeah. the reason that it's not listened to in, you know, Bangladesh is because we're not speaking that language. Right. So yeah. 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 Uh, I don't, I don't know. I don't know, maybe some translations in the books and things like that, but yeah, no, no plans. All right. Andrew Voss. Hey, Ryan. Actually, Kip, I would say Kip, my, one other oh, thing on that last one. There's nothing to keep you from sharing this information though. Yeah. So if you have friends wherever you are, let's say you're in, I, I don't, did he say where he is? Well, I, I'm assuming Spanish. So Spain, Mexico, okay, Spain. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, it doesn't really matter where, where you live. If, if you're getting value from what we're doing here and you feel like you want to translate, maybe get a men's group together, maybe get four or five of you together uh, every month and you pick a topic or a podcast that we talk about, or you pick a chapter of one of our books, summarize it or the masculinity yeah. manifesto. And you know, you, you do it that way, or you even join the iron council and have some of your guys join the iron council. And look, I'm, I'm happy to set up a Spanish brand branch or, 
uh, or, or Portugal or, or Brazil or whatever, like I'm happy to set that up. So if there's five or six of you and like, Hey, let's join the iron council and let's make this, the, the, we'll start the a new team battle team. Yeah. Let's do it. I'm all for that. I think that'd be a lot of fun actually. So yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Andrew Voss. Hey, Ryan and Kip, my wife and I argue over her parenting techniques versus mine of our oldest son, which is nine. While she is not uh, his biological mother, we make up, we make sure she is able to parent him all the same. The number one thing that we argue about is how we, how she parents and speaks to him. I feel it is more bullying and harsh than parenting. My wife and I have a baby boy together now who is going to be one this month. Her and I are on the same page in almost every aspect of life. How do we get on the same page with parenting techniques? We talk about having a second child, but I'd like to have us be on the same page with parenting our children before we make the decision. Any advice is greatly appreciated. Thanks for all you do. Yeah, that's a hard one. Um, I'm actually curious if they have a baby too. Is that right? They have a baby together. Yeah, that's almost one. And then how old is the, the, his son, not, not her biological son, but his son nine. I'm actually really curious. You can't tell right now, obviously, but I'm really curious what her parenting style will be like with your one-year-old. Totally. Like, I'm very curious if it will be the same as it is with your son, who's nine, because there's obviously going to be, well, there might be a lot there. There might be some, some contention. There might be some jealousy, uh, there, there might be just, uh, some sort of frustration or anger because he's your son, not hers. Like there might be things there. I, I don't want to jump to that conclusion, but I would be, it would be very interesting to know if she treats your guys' kid together, the same as she treats your, your oldest son. I don't want to, I don't want to like bring this up necessarily and like bring up fights that you guys can get into about how he <laughs> <laughs> like that's not what I'm talking about. Yeah, give you ammunition. Actually, yeah. Right. I'm actually just curious, but I, I, you know, I think you guys are doing the right thing. It sounds like you're talking about it. That's, that's the most important thing. And what I would encourage you to do is rather than trying to prove each other wrong or you wrong, or, Hey, you're bullying him. There might be a reason why, you know, and it could be some of that contention. Uh, or maybe that is just her parenting style for all, for all of her children. And maybe that's how she was parented. So I think there are some opportunities to get down a little deeper rather than just saying, and maybe you've done this, but rather than just saying, Hey, you know, I don't like the way you're doing it, it comes across as bullying is, is she might not see it that way, or she might yeah. not even recognize that that that's how it may be perceived. So let's try to strip away some of those layers and really understand why she's doing it that way. Now, if that's just her personality, like, does she talk to you like that? It doesn't sound like it because you guys get along in a lot of other aspects from what you're saying. So it's just this isolated thing. So what, why, why? And I, I would suggest that it's probably something that's been hardwired into her from the time that she was, she was younger and, or there's some contention or animosity towards the nine-year-old if I had to guess. Yeah. I mean, like you already alluded to, right? I, I don't want to create like some, yeah, opportunity risks. to generate right. more argument, right. Or risks, but maybe a few considerations for me, um, it was different. So how I parented my wife's son versus my biological boys is different. I, I don't, it's, I, it's more logical. It's less empathetic for whatever reason. And people might criticize me for this, but I would argue most people that want to like pretend that it's not different. They're lying. It's different. You have some built-in kind of empathy for your biological kids and you're more logical with your non-biological. So it, it could be different. The other thing to consider, um, well, what was his name again? Sorry. I should know this part. Uh, Andrew, one thing to consider is, is she countering how you're parenting, right? I, I've seen that with my wife and I, where with her son, I think she's too soft on him and she babies him too much. So how do I show up in the parenting? I go, I, I overboard it, right? I go, oh, you'll be too, you know, and I'm, and I'm actually parenting in spite of her because I think she's being too soft. And so I overdo it. And that, which causes her to do what mama bear even more because I'm too mm. harsh. And, and, and so once again, back to your point, Ryan, the conversation is super critical, but but also see how your parenting might be affecting her parenting. And then the 
the last thing, which I've heard you say numerous times, Ryan, is we're not the same. And and so I also think that there, there is some healthy level of saying a dad is going to bring a certain type of parenting to the table and mom's going to bring a level of parenting to the table. And guess what? They can complement complement each other and they're not necessarily bad because they're different. Mm-hmm. And so figure out where that balance is too. I'm not saying bullying your kid's fine, but dads are going to be naturally a little bit more aggressive and that might be okay. You guys need to come to that conclusion, but don't think that you have to parent the same for it to complement one another. Yeah. And he's actually saying the opposite. He's saying that she's more, she, that she, she, it feels like she's more bullying than, than maybe he does. So that's almost the opposite yeah. dynamic. Uh, the only other thing I would add to that Kip is there, there are some things that she probably does pretty good when it comes to parenting. Right. Yeah. So it's easier to criticize a little bit. It is. And yeah. maybe, maybe there's some opportunities here just to acknowledge and respect and appreciate what she does. I mean, that's not her son. That's got to be hard. There's got to be stuff with that, right? There has to be, of course. Um, And yet she's still there. Maybe she's doing the best she can. Maybe she's doing the best she learned. Uh, Maybe there are elements of it that you really like how she parents and focus on that. You know, Hey, hun, just want to let you know uh, how it went with, with, with little Jimmy today. Um, I know that was kind of a hard thing and and that was a challenge. And I just want to let you know, I really appreciate the the couple of points that you made to him. That was, that was really powerful. Thank you. And I wonder if acknowledging what she is doing and trying to see it from her perspective might help open the doors to her being more understanding of you at some point saying, Hey, you know, like when you do that, he's interpreting it this way and he's not feeling great about it. In fact, he tells me about it. The other thing is making sure that you're not throwing her under the bus with your son too, right? So if she quote unquote bullies him, like you're saying, I'm just using that term because that's the term you used. And then he comes running to you. You you can't, like if you and your wife want to have a healthy relationship, you can't take his side on that and say, oh yeah, you're right. She was wrong. She shouldn't have done that. Now that, that might be true, no, boy, no. but you don't talk with a kid about that. You go back and you talk with her about it. And, and what you say to the kid is, Hey, look, I understand how you feel. That's fine. Cause his feelings are, are important. So I understand how you feel about that, but I want you to know that she does really love you because she's expressed that to me and that she's doing what she can to help raise you. And I'm very grateful for her. And you start talking about her that way, man, that's so much more powerful than than trying to throw her under the bus or create that, that divide or that rift between the two, maybe not even trying just inadvertently doing it. Yeah. And you mentioned some, having some empathy around her, you know, also keep in mind that he might be treating her differently than, than he treats you. Yeah. Good point. And so, point. so she might be kind of retaliating a little bit because mm-hmm. nine-year-old Billy is being a little prick. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? But with yeah. you, he's like, Oh dad, you're the best. Right. So, I mean, you know, have some empathy. Yeah. I didn't even think about that. Good point. Cool. Yeah. Little, little brats joke. <laughs> All right. Joe Bozik, thoughts on purchasing and financing a vehicle, cash or finance? 10% of paycheck rule for a monthly payment or Ramsey's rule or bust? Ramsey's rules or bust on that. Would like to get a newer truck, but the current market is over the top. My kids are going to outgrow my old tried and true vehicle sooner than later. <laughs> yeah, but they're not there yet. Yeah. Like, what do you worry about in two years that you won't be able to find a vehicle? Like you're, I, I think you're worrying about something that's not an issue right now because you're trying to justify you wanting a new truck. Yeah. Which is totally understandable. I can understand. And it's it fine. <laughs> and it's fine. If you want a new truck, fine, but just don't say clear it's because your it. kids. Yeah. Yeah. Just be clear on it. Yeah. I mean, you're look, if you want to buy a new truck, you're barking up the wrong tree with me. Yeah. Like you should probably ask somebody else. Cause I'm going to tell you flat out, like, just don't. Why, why go buy a new truck? Whatever you have is fine. I'm sure of it. I'm sure the family fits okay in there. It may not be perfect. It may not be ideal. It may not have all the bells and whistles, but we know it's fine. And so you're going to dump all this money into a vehicle. You already said the market's 
uh, overinflated and we know it is. So not a, if the market was normal, you'd still dep have this depreciating asset, not even asset, just this depreciating liability. Yeah. Now we're talking about it being inflated and it being even worse than that. So <laughs> if, if worse, it's me, yeah. what I'm telling you right now is just don't. All right. If you're, if you're, let's say your payment's going to be, I don't know, three or 400 bucks a month. Why don't you just take that three, three or 400 bucks and set it aside, maybe pay off some other debt that you have. That's high interest debt. Uh, maybe set that aside in a bank account somewhere. And over a couple of years, you'll have 10 grand you can put down on a, on a vehicle, but yeah, you don't need a new, you don't need a new truck. You know it, if you want it and you can afford it by all means, sure. Um, we have a little bit of debt on our Suburban. Uh, my truck's paid off, has been for a couple of years now. The Suburban's very close. The interest rate is so low, it just doesn't make sense to even pay it off, really. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, we financed vehicles, but I think I put 50% down on on the Suburban, and I think I probably did about the same on the, on the truck, somewhere in there. Yeah. Why is there ever a case... You know, like his question was thoughts on purchasing cash or finance. Is there ever a case where, I mean, wh where's the scenario by which you go, hey, yeah, you know what? Financing is a good idea here versus cash. I think a 0% interest loan would would be a good reason to do that. You know, you might yeah. you might find a, find uh, an opportunity to like se either Use seller financing elsewhere. or- yeah, I don't I don't know that might work or uh there's some your credit card has some sort of introductory offer or something um you know that might be a good reason maybe you have the cash but you don't do it because it's 0%. Just be careful cuz there is some fine print in that like if you don't pay it off in 4 years or you miss one payment then all of a sudden it goes from 0 up to 19. So you got to be careful with that kind of stuff. But yeah, if if yeah. the interest rate's super low or non-existent, that that would be a case where it would make sense just make sure that you don't go blow the money. If you, if let's say you're purchasing a, I don't know, $45,000 vehicle, like, and you've got 45 grand set aside. Okay. Well now your payments, I don't know what your payment would be on that. Maybe what, four or 500 bucks a month. I really don't know actually. Yeah. I, we just don't, don't do that, but yeah, don't go blow the $45,000 you have in your account on something dumb. Just make sure that you've got it set aside so that you can still pay off that vehicle and, and you're in the black. Yeah. Okay. Ben Dixon for the battle ready program. Hold on. I got to say uh, one more thing. I got to say yeah, one yeah, more yeah. thing. Just don't be emotional with your financial decisions. Hmm. Just don't like strip the emotion out of it. I see trucks driving by on the corner every day and I have guys coming over for events and things like that. And I see their trucks and I see their cars and I'm like, Oh, that'd be rad. And it would, it would be rad for yeah. a couple of weeks, you know? So and then it's with just my a vehicle, yeah, yeah, with my truck, um, my wife and I were talking, I wanted to put some step rails on it, uh, and just do a few little different things. I had to fix like the back seat of the, the driver's side auto. My son pushed it, like kicked it off of there and it broke. And it was just some little ticky tacky things here and there, some dents and things that needed to be replaced or fixed. And so I, my wife and I talked, I'm like, you know, I'm just going to pay this off first. And then once it's paid off, I can start doing those little things. So I did, I paid the truck off. I, I spent, I don't know, a thousand bucks on the side rails, um, maybe three or 400 on the back seat thing. I got a new one and got that set up. Uh, did the Rhino lining or the line X on it. You know, that was something I didn't do for years and years and years because like, I'm not going to be emotional about a hunk of metal. I'm just not. Unless yeah. you're in a position where you can and you want to buy the car purely off emotion, which is I want to buy this car because it makes me feel dot, dot, dot. And you're in the financial position to do that. Yeah, sure. By all means, go yeah. do that. I think the key thing is be clear on it, right? Like, like yeah. it, like it, it's like this. When I, when I bought a, when I bought my truck a, a few months back, Asia goes, do we need a truck? And I'm like, no, actually, we're probably okay because her dad has a truck, and whenever I need one, I just borrow his, you know. And she's yeah. like, "Why do you want to buy it then?" I'm like, "Cause I just want to." Yeah. And she's like, "Okay, okay, <laughs> yeah." Like, be clear on it. Like, don't don't pretend that it's like, "Oh, well, I need it." It's like, "Well, actually, I don't need it, but but right. I want to." And and right. we're in a position that I could 
buy something because I want to, not because I need to. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. That's fine. Copy. All right. All right. Next question. Uh, ben Dixon, he has a question about the battle ready program. He says for the battle ready program, you identify four quadrants, calibration, connection, condition, and contribution to improve your life by what quadrants do you use for business or a career? A contribution. And, and I, and I put it in that category because so contribution is becoming a man of value. It's, it's, it's adding more than you take. It's giving back. It's developing skill sets and, and developing the abilities to make money and then to be able to create a life around that. Uh, so when that, and that's something that a lot of people don't really get right is they think that, oh, well, if I'm earning money, then I'm not really contributing that we got to get out of that mindset. Yeah. We have We're demonizing get, it, right? Everybody demonizes cap capitalism, frankly. But if you think about at the root of everything else that what capitalism is, it's, it's basically just the, the, the voluntary exchange of goods or services. So Kip, if I have um, a computer that you want, a new computer that you want, and, and, I'm, and I say, hey, this is, it's a thousand bucks if you want to buy this computer, you have to believe that the computer is worth more than the thousand dollars you're going to give me to pay for it. And I have to believe that your thousand dollars is worth more than the computer I'm giving you. If either one of us don't believe that, that we're getting more value out of the deal, it doesn't take place. So the, isn't that a cool thing? Because if you give me $1,000 and you think the computer is worth more then you have the computer and you win. And also existing at the you same win. time, I win because I'm like, sweet, I got $1,000 and the computer to me was only really worth 700. Like, it's a win-win scenario. It's a win-win situ situation. So I always put business, career, that sort of thing, money, finances into the contribution quadrant because in order to make more money, advance in our career, start a business, get a promotion, we have to learn and embrace the idea that we need to contribute more than we currently are. Sure. You talk about how these quadrants support one another. Do you want to talk through kind of the balance of that and why it's important that a, a gentleman doesn't go through a battle ready program and just focus on one quadrant, right? And just kill it in calibration and, you know, drop connection and condition, you know, yeah. you know, or, or whatever. Yeah. And it's tempting to do that. And there actually might be times where you need to shift a little bit. So we'll talk about balance. Um, let, let's talk about it right now. Ba balance is a verb. It's not some place or destination that you arrive at. It's a verb. You're balancing. Like you should never say, I want to find balance. You, you should say, I want to learn how to balance. Right. That do you see the distinction there? Yeah. Like finding it's yeah. like, oh, I, once I once somebody tells me this magic formula of how much time I should spend away and how much time I should spend with my family and how much time here and how much time there, then everything will fall into place. Like I've arrived. No. Yeah. Balance is a verb and it changes on a minute by minute basis. Let me give you an example. I'm very focused and present in this conversation that we're having right now. This would fall under contribution part of the business. I'm trying to add value to people's lives. You and I are having a good conversation. It could also be fall under um, um, connection too, because you and I are, are connected. We have a relationship, right? So we're fostering and bolstering that relationship as we're having this conversation, as long as it's healthy and productive. But I, I would put this in contribution. Well, if I hear a scream downstairs, so I work at home, if I hear a scream downstairs, like a blood curdling scream, guess what? Conversation over. Yep. And I'm run, and I'm like, Kip, I'm out. See ya. I go downstairs and one of my kids breaks, breaks their arm. We're going to the hospital. Right. So that's a, that's a small example of how something can shift in a minute by minute basis. Now, does it make me wrong that I shifted away from contribution and went over to my family and, and connection with my family? No, I think all of us would say those are priorities. That's the right thing to do. So when we're talking about balancing between, let's break it down. Let's take the four quadrants. And you learn more about this in the Iron Council. And by the way, again, you can sneak in there if you do it in the next couple of days. 
But if you take these four quadrants, so you take calibration and we put that one first because it's very, very important. And it's something a lot of guys overlook and that's getting right with yourself mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. Next is, is conne uh, connection. Those are the relationships that you have with other people, not just your wife, not just your kids, not friends, but everybody, all of your relationships. Next is condition. That's your physical health. So that's nutrition, that's strength, stamina, sleep, rest, recovery, hydration, all of it. And then contribution, becoming a man of value. And usually you're going to be rewarded in some way through career aspirations and goals and business and clients and things like that. So, th so those are the four. Depending on what you want, and this is why in the battle planning and the battle ready program is we start with your vision. What is it that you want out of life? And we go through a process of that. And depending on what you want out of your life is going to determine how we're going to create our battle plan and where we're going to put our priorities. But yeah, there's the adage that, that goes around that says the way you do one thing is the way you do everything. That's not actually true. I mean, at some level it is like the way that you show up, if you're, that's more of a, a values thing. Like if, if you're a hard worker in this department, you're going to be a hard worker here. Or if you're an in integrity in one place, you're going to be an in integrity usually in other places. Like that's a values statement. But I, I know plenty of guys, myself included, who can absolutely knock it out of the park in the, in the career quadrant and absolutely flop on the ground and flop all over the place in the family department. So it does, it's not always that the way you do one thing is the way you do everything. But you do need to find this balance based on external circumstances. So if my kid downstairs breaks their arm, okay, I got to pivot. I got to shift. The best analogy I've ever used for that is if you're surfing and you're on a surfboard and you're riding that wave, there's going to be the water and there's going to be the tide and there's going to be the current. There's going to be the way the wave's going and how it's breaking. There's going to be all these factors that are beyond your control. They really are. And dynamic in nature. Yeah. Yeah. And you can't control these factors, right? You can't, all you can do is ride the wave to the best of your ability, but the wave is coming and the wave's going to do whatever it's going to do. Now you can influence that. And we do influence it by where do you go surfing? Yeah. Right. Wh what time of day? What is your skill set relative to what waves you should be trying to ride? When, when do you stand up? When, like there's things that you can do to put yourself in better situations. Me as a guy who's only surfed twice in his life would never go try to ride a 25 foot wave. I would die, literally die. Now, would I try to ride three and four feet? Yeah, I think that's manageable. I think I could, pro I, I still might die, but I could, I could probably be okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, so when you're riding that wave and the wave is doing what the wave does, regardless of how you feel about it, you just have to shift and pivot left, right, forward, back, up, down. Like you're making all these little micro adjustments and the best surfers in the world are doing that intuitively. They're not even thinking about it. They just feel it. It's because the wave becomes part of them, right? It's, it's an extent. The surfboard is an extension of them, right? Because they've done it so many times it becomes intuitive. So balance is very much the same way. When things go wrong, it's like, man, I got to put more weight towards my family, which is where I'm at right now. And more weight on, frankly, more weight towards uh, the first one, which is calibration. I'm out of alignment. And I have been over the past couple months. And so it's like, oh man, like nothing else matters. I got to get, it, it, let me correct that. Nothing else matters as much as me getting back in alignment. And yeah. the beauty of this to your point earlier is once I start getting back in alignment, who am I? What is my purpose here? What, what are my values? What am I driven by? What are my priorities? What's important to me? I get that calibration in line and now everything else starts to work just a little bit better. Yeah. That's and it, good. Yeah. And I, I was just going to add, I mean, that balance is so critical. I mean, I, I've seen guys, I mean, I've had guys when I was a team lead in the IC where, you know, it's like, Oh, you know what? My relationship with my spouse, my family is just so solid, you know, and, and I'm going to take it easy in that quadrant and I'm going to focus on condition and contribution and, and these other areas. And then all of a sudden, what happens when we neglect that area of our lives? Oh, crap. Right. 
now my, my family life has fallen apart. And so there's the balance of, of across these, but I, I also, they support one another. And we talk about this um, at my employment where it's like work, work-life balance is actually work-life supporting and integration, mm. right? Work, if things are going great at work, guess how you show up at home? More powerfully mm. at home, right? When, when you got your, your health in check and you feel great about your body and you're in control of it, you show up better. To, for your kids and your family, you have more energy, right? When your life at home is going well, it allows you to show up at work in a more powerful way. So these things, not just is there a balance of them, but they support each other and they allow us to show up more powerfully in all areas when we when we keep that alignment in check. Yeah, I like that work-life integration, trying to integrate it all. And as you were speaking about that, I was thinking about the game Jenga. Remember that game, like mm -hmm. with the blocks? Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, if you're crumbling at family, like your finances are going to suffer. Absolutely. And so you cool. have all these little pieces in the Jenga puzzle, right? And you push one out. You're like, ah, I'm going to pull that one out. And all of a sudden the whole structure is less stable. Pull another one out, less stable. The more you pull out of, of these pieces, the less stable the structure is. And then eventually somebody pulls out just the right one and the whole thing tumbles. And so what are those pieces? Well, those pieces are distractions. They're temptations. They're being out of integrity. They're being tired. That's one I hear a lot. It's addiction. Heart attack. Medical yeah. issues. Like these are all yeah. the pieces that are going to happen throughout life to all of us in one form or another. Suicide, you know, somebody commits suicide or you lose a loved one. You get sued. You have a car accident. You go through a divorce, you have a bankruptcy, like all of these things are just little pieces. And the more you pull out of those, man, very easily the thing comes toppling down. So we need to make sure we maintain that base by hitting all of these quadrants. Not all the same at all times, but all of them to the degree they need to be addressed. Aaron Campbell, besides marriage and birth of kids, what are the three most meaningful moments from your life? And did you curate those moments or did they just happen to you? So most memorable moments hmm. in your life besides marriage and the birth of your kids. Wait, way to, way to take away the top two. You mean, yeah, for but, sure. Um, yeah. Marriage and kids other than marriage and kids, most meaningful moments. Um, I, I would say one is starting order of man. That was a big one for me, you know, is to take the risk, take the leap. And, and I would say even, even more than just starting it is when I sold my financial planning practice and I completely washed my hands of my financial planning practice and went 100% into order of that. That, yeah. that was a big, that was a big leap for me. That. Yeah. Um, joining the military. Uh, and then when I got back from deployment, very proud of that. Uh, joining, but then also, uh, you know, going through basic training and the, and the skills and the confidence that came with that. And then going on deployment and coming back, that was a big one for me. Uh, and then again, along the lines of order of man, really, you know, I'd like to say writing the second book, but it's not, it was writing my first book. Like that was a, that was a big it's achievement a for me. Major milestone for you. Yeah, yeah. I was very, very proud of that because it's not something that comes easy to me, but it's something I wanted to put out in the world. And that's a, that's a thing of pride for me. So I would say those three things yeah. for me. How about you? Man, I don't know. I mean, the one thing that came to mind is I, I remember uh, going to college seemed to be such a unattainable item for me as a kid. And so mm -hmm. I, I remember that being like a really defining moment of moving out as, as I think I was 18 at the time. And I was in Phoenix and I was about to start school like on a Monday and it was Sunday. Right. And I was just like, yeah, I'm doing this. Right. And it mm -hmm. was like a kind of a, a big step for me. Um, the other one I'd have to say is, is probably um, not to make it all negative town, but it was a, as a really meaningful moment is where, where I kind of got slapped up the side of the head um, in the, in the middle of my divorce, to be frank. Um, and realized like the, where my, the, where the place where my life was at that moment was a hundred percent within my control. Hmm. And up until that moment, there was a whole lot of like, 
life is this way because I'm being acted upon and, and it wasn't my fault. And there's a lot of blaming and a lack of ownership. And that was as scary as it was, because there was a moment of like, oh shit, this is all me. Like, right. You created, I'm it. owning this, right. I created this, but it was also like empowering. It was like, okay, like I'm going to do this. Like, this is my life. Right. And, and I'm not going to hold on to any of these excuses. And, and I let go of the blaming. And that was a really pivotal moment and very meaningful part of my life for sure. Hmm. That's awesome. Heartache. Yeah suffering, <laughs> no doubt, no but, doubt, but meaningful nonetheless. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Cool. All right. What else we got? All right. Dallin, Michael, are your thoughts on daycare the same as thoughts on public schools? We are considering daycare for a year until my wife gets out of grad school. So I can go back to full-time work right now. I am a part-time working nights. I'm also in school online. So your thoughts are on daycare, same as public school. I don't think it's the same as public school because daycares aren't required to follow some sort of curriculum and they aren't necessarily interjected and inundated with this woke ideology that needs to, you know, permeate the academia. It and seems public like. policy is not forced into it. And, right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So from, from that perspective, I don't think it's the same. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't encourage people to have their kids at daycare. You know, if you have to, because of school situations, like you're talking mm -hmm. about, I understand. I, I went to daycare um, because it was my mom raising us. So she had to put me and Ash in, in daycare. Like that's just how it worked, you know, how it went. Yeah. And it, it wasn't horrible. Like I don't, I don't have any traumatic experiences or anything from that. I remember having friends I played with and a bunch of, I played a lot of Legos, you know, like, yeah. So yeah. I, but I, I would move towards having somebody at home as quickly as possible. You know, and I, and I don't know, I mean, wh who am I to say what your dynamic should be with your, your household dynamic, but I don't know. I, I just feel like if having kids at home and, and having one of you be with the kids is, is kind of a crucial thing, you know? So yeah, kind of the ideal experience, right? I think it is, but who am I to say what's ideal yeah. for you? I, you, you have yeah. to decide that for yourself, but for me, that would be ideal. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. I mean, I don't have anything to add. I, I, Koa, he's four. He goes to daycare for two hours. I really think it's just so Asia can have like a two hour break. <laughs> you know what I mean? And that's and like, let, she's let's, like, hey, let's, you know what? Yeah. You know, let's that's be good honest for her. about that. Yeah, it's like, like, I mean, you say two hour break and I know you're not saying it mean spirited at all, but like we mm -hmm. say two hour break. I get it. <laughs> I, I get it. You know, if you need two hours and you want to do some shopping or, or maybe you have a, a, an activity or a hobby or an interest or gardening or whatever it might be, and you need a couple hours per day to do that, then yeah, I can certainly understand where that would come from. So yeah. Okay, cool. Any other questions? No, those are all right. Our, that's all the good. questions for today, man. Good. Short we sweet. got through them all. Yeah. Well, good guys. Um, let's wrap it up, Kip, and I'll let you bring it home and then we'll uh, close up for the day and get to our days and our week and let the guys get going to theirs. Sounds good. So, I mean, you guys got bonus material and the bonus material is you can get in the IC, even though it's officially closed. So That's if right. you're getting this message on Wednesday and let's be frank, it's probably going to be closed by the end of the day, by the time you listen to this. So um, if you're on the fence, Take some action, make it happen. That's orderofman.com slash iron council. Connect with Mr. Mickler on Twitter and Instagram at Ryan Mickler. And of course, as always, join us in the different areas by joining our Facebook group at facebook.com slash group slash order of man or connecting with us on social media. Or of course, like I've already mentioned, uh, join us in the iron council and, and band with us. That's right. Well, Kip, I appreciate you guys. I appreciate you. Great questions today. Hopefully, hopefully we gave you some some things to consider anyways. That's what we want to do is give you some things to consider. And then obviously you need to make your own decisions. So appreciate you all. Yeah. And we'll be back on Friday until then go out there, take action and become the man you are meant to be.